Grab your paintbrushes and take cover because today we're painting up some artillery. I'm Angela, you're watching Hobby Night. Now go! We clear? I'm really glad that missed us. Now, you may have noticed on the channel, I've been painting a lot of space wizards and that has actually got me in the mood for painting some real world military. So I was looking at my Imperial Guard list for Warhammer, going, what can I add to these boys to really satisfy wanting to paint both infantry and some big, big guns? Well, I found my Field Ordnance Battery. So I'm gonna be painting up one of these today using a quick and easy method using contrast paints. But when we're done with that, we're going to grab these Tamiya weathering powders that I've absolutely been loving. We're gonna enhance that paint job with these. So without further ado, let's get started. Because this is going to be a very warm color scheme, I decided to base them in Wraith Bone. And then I wanted to go ahead and start with the Guardsmen first because I know that they're going to be the most time consuming and I'm going to be using the majority of the colors that I picked out for this particular paint scheme on them. Now, the first thing that I actually wanna tackle is their khaki uniform. I'm going to be achieving this by thinning down some skeleton horde and applying it delicately to all of their uniform parts. Now, the reason I'm being extra careful about this is because I find with some of the lighter contrast colors, if you let them pull too heavily into the recesses, you get a really harsh contrast between your shadows and your highlights, and I really don't want this on their uniform. It needs to be nice and soft and pale. So I'm going to pull up any of the excess pooling that I might be seeing in the folds as soon as I see them. We're then going to set them aside to dry and work on some of the accessories that the kit came with, specifically the ammo crates that it came with. I want to paint these up in a dark wooden color tone for a more natural look, and I'm going to be using Wildwood for that. I really love this color on a wood green, and I just think it looks really cool here, but you could do this in a metallic or even an army green color if you wanted to. Now that the Guardsmen are dry, we can go ahead and start working on some of their leather accessories. For this, I'm going with my tried and true classic of Gargax Sewer. I just really like the way that this particular color dries. I think it looks like a nice hardened leather. We're going to apply this to their boots, to their um, belts and their gloves and any other leather accessories that the Guardsmen might have on them. Now, speaking of their boots, I do wanna paint them up slightly separately from the wraps that go around them that I just painted in the brown. And for that, I'm going to be using Black Templar. This gets a nice coating over their boots, gives it that classic look, and we can move on to all that fancy armor they're wearing. Now it's time to work on all of that lovely armor. And I'm gonna be painting this in a classic green Acadia color scheme, as I mentioned, and I'm going back to a tried and true color that I absolutely love from the contrast line. Something that I've used on my Death Guard all of the time, and that is Militarum Green. This is definitely one of my favorite contrast green color tones. I've used it on so many things. We're gonna apply it here to all of their armor, as well as some of the reinforced beams on those ammo crates that we were painting earlier. This way, it ends up making it look like those ammo crates were actually sent to them by the Imperium. They actually belong to them. And it's not like what I do with my orcs where I end up giving them looted materials. Now with the green taken care of, there are still a few things that we need to paint on our guardsmen, specifically their weapons and tools. And for this, I wanna go with just a classic gray look. And so for that, I'm going to pull out some Basilicanum gray. This is my go-to for a really nice non-metallic metal look. And you can really add some variety by thinning or layering up a lot of this paint and adding some variety, which is what I do a little bit on my models. Now, the last thing to take care of on the Guardsmen themselves is their faces. I want to pull out Crusader Flesh for this because I used it on Luke previously and I really like the effect I got out of it. So I'm going to apply it to the few places where we have some exposed faces as well as hands. And now that we're done with that, we can work on the big gun. For the big cannon, we're going to be revisiting some of the colors we just used. Militarum Green, Basilicanum Gray, and Black Templar. But you might notice that this footage looks a little bit different, and that's because I actually recorded it on a live stream on Tuesday, where you guys could join me at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. This happens every Tuesday, and I'm really gonna be focusing on some of the stuff that I'm working on for the Friday videos. And as we approach 10th edition, that's going to include my new 10th edition army. So I do hope that you can join me in the future for the live streams. Again, those happen at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time time every Tuesday. Now we still have the base and we need to finish getting this model assembled and tufted. So let's go ahead and take care of that next. It's time to work on the base. Now I want this to match what I've done on my other Imperial Guardsmen, but when I was looking at references, I realized I used Sterling Mud on them. And Sterling Mud 
is a little bit tricky to work with on these larger bases. I just know this from personal experience and I don't want to deal with it. So I'm going to cheat the effect a little bit because the Sterling mud on those bases is actually very compact. I try to make it look like compact dirt rather than it actually being muddy. And I think I can achieve that using some Armageddon dust. So I'm going to apply that to the base, spread it very thinly, and then let it dry thoroughly. Once it's dried to help darken it up and make it look a bit more like dirt instead of sand, I'm going to apply some Agrass Earth Shade to it. This works perfectly, but I still want to have a little bit of a highlight. So I'm going to come back in with some Talarin Sand, dry brush this over top all those textures, and create that nice highlight that I want. With this complete, we can finally move on to the weathering, which is what I've been looking forward to most about this project. I'm going to be using my Tamiya weathering powders, and we're going to be focusing on three in particular. The first one is called Dirt. This is just a nice dark brown. Obviously, you can probably tell why I want to use it. I just talked about how it was making this nice dirt base, and I want to make it look like some of that dirt has ended up on their pants, as well as the ordinance itself. We're going to focus really hard on the tires, as well as the undercarriage and their boots. Once I'm satisfied with how it's looking, we can move on to the cannon itself. Now for the tip, I want to make it look like it's actually had some stuff being fired out of it. And instead of using the soot color tone, I'm actually going to go with the gunmetal color tone. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to add a little bit of a metallic finish to the model. And this does this perfectly. So once we have the gunmetal on the tip, we can move on to the final weathering powder we need to use, which is the silver color tone. This is gonna go on all the other metallic parts on not only the cannon, but also on the men themselves, specifically focusing on all of their Imperial Eagles because I want them to shine a little bit and I absolutely love the effect. With the weathering done, we can now assemble the model back together, making the man sit down on his cannon and then applying that to the base. And once everything has dried to the base, I'm going to go ahead and start tufting it. Now for this, I'm going to be using my Gamer Grass tufts and I really, really like these because they just, the self-adhesive works super, super well. I picked out two different colors, one that has some nice dark browns and greens in it and one that's a lighter color that complements the khaki on their uniforms. I spread those around and with that, we can take a look at the final model. And here they are. I absolutely love how this particular model turned out. Between the weathering effects, the tufting, and honestly, the very simplistic color scheme, it was a breeze to get through and a lot of fun to work on. And really, that's what I'm looking for when I'm painting things. I just want it to be fun and easy and make it so that I want to paint more. And honestly, I have another one of these that I'm probably going to build up, maybe do a different gun, but apply some of the same effects, and I think it's going to look amazing. It really does make me want to work on more of my guardsmen. Now, I hope you guys have enjoyed this particular episode and are looking forward to future content. As I mentioned, I do hobby live streams on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you're ever wanting to see what I'm working on early before this Friday video is out, that's the best way to find out without joining my Patreon. Speaking of my Patreon, I want to thank my patrons for making so content like this can continue to happen. Without your guys' support, we would not be doing this. So thank you very, very much. I have been Angela, and I hope you have a wonderful hobby night.